How's everybody doing? Good. All right, I expect a lot of fruit throwing and tomato throwing if I do terrible, okay? So just wear your expression on your face, because if you look like you're miserable, I'll just do random things to make you laugh. I already did that for you. <laughs> uh, my name is Roy. Uh, I am the owner of JMC Brands. We're a digital ad agency, but that's not why I'm here today. I'm here to talk about faking it until you earn it. And so uh, I don't want to spend a whole lot of time talking about myself, but I have been in the marketing industry for, I don't know, 15 years. I worked for one of the largest ad agencies in the world, McKen Erickson. Uh, worked on the Army account. And, um, and so now I'm doing my own thing. And uh, today, I, I want to set the bar for everybody that we are all on the same page, OK? We have all either faked it, we are currently faking it, or we will fake it at some point in the future, right? So don't look to the person to your left, to the right, and say, oh, they got it all together, because they don't. You know, they might have it together in a lot of areas, right? There's a lot of awesome people here, but not everybody has it all together. So now that we're all in the same field, why are we faking it? That's, that's something that I want to discuss with you guys today. Why are we faking it? There's a couple of reasons. First off, ignorance. You don't know what you don't know, right? You just, you can't possibly know. You're going to end up in situations where you are faced with an obstacle that you don't know how to overcome right out the gate. We as entrepreneurs, we are expected, especially from our team, from our customers, to know what's going on. Now, I, I really enjoy, on the ignorance plane, uh, one of the sayings that I like to live by is that you really only need to know 10% more than your customer, and you sound like a genius. So I rely on that one a lot. I really do. But underdeveloped skills is something else that is a reason why we have to fake it sometimes. How many of you guys have a college education? OK, how many of you have a master's degree? How many of you have a doctorate? OK, so you see how the numbers dwindled down there? Right? If you have a doctorate, you've spent a lot of time developing your skills in a formal education setting. Now, how many of you are entrepreneurs? How many of you learn every single day something new? Right? As we go through time, we're going to learn more and more. It's just the way that it is. So the more skills that we get, the more that we can use those skills to not have to fake it as much. Now, laziness is something that I see sometimes, where somebody walks into a meeting, and you can tell that they are completely unprepared whatsoever. Uh, I have seen both ends of the spectrum, where people walk into a meeting, and they know the person that they're meeting with top to bottom. They've done their homework. Uh, I've even seen them make presentations that have little hidden Easter eggs inside of them that really speak to the person that they're talking to. Uh, one of my favorite, my brother works for me, and we had a presentation with somebody, and uh, one of the tools that we have is a landing page tool. And uh, the client that we were meeting with, he put his picture in the landing page tool to show what his, what his actual picture was. And he, he just put, you know, Joe Schmo, blah, 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 but he put his picture in there, and he, he caught it. The picture was probably about that big on the printout. But he caught it, and you just saw, he just started grinning, and you're like, oh, he saw it. He saw it. But I've been on the other side, too, where somebody has not spent any time preparing whatsoever. They walk in, they're like, I've got this. And then you can tell they're stumbling over their words. They're not quite sure what they're talking about. They say, um, hum, mm, um, maybe, well, uh, a lot. You know, you can really tell that they're not prepared. But, you know, we're entrepreneurs. We have to, we have to fake it, right? We have to, if we're not prepared, we're always going to end up in situations. But then on the flip side, entrepreneurs tend to have a, a little bit of a confidence issue sometimes. You're on one end of the spectrum or the other. You're either really not confident and, and it shows, or you are really, 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 really confident. How many of you guys are really, really, really confident? You walk into any meeting and you got this, like a couple. How many of you guys are kind of like, all right, I have to study. I have to do a lot of work to make sure I'm comfortable. All right, I am right there with you. I've seen some people, though, that have walked in, and they're just like, oh, I got this. And you can tell 10 minutes into the meeting, they finally understand what they're talking about. Because they're just, they're just spouting just random stuff. Oh, yeah, Facebook remarketing, targeting, tag ad, yeah, blah, blah, blah. And you're like, this has nothing to do with what we're talking about. We're talking about Google Analytics, right? Like, this has nothing to do with Google Analytics. And about 15 minutes into it, they pick, up, they pick it up. But, and then there's the, it's the instance where you get there and you say, hey, guess what? Surprise, you're in charge. I thought you were in charge. Oh, no, I just set up the meeting. You're in charge. You didn't tell me I was in charge. Oh, well, you got this. Just go to town. And you get thrown under the bus. How many of you have ever been thrown under the bus? Multiple times. <laughs> in the same meeting. <laughs> Maybe that's just me. All right, let's, let's play a little game, shall we? All right. 
You're going to look at the picture. What do you think these guys, in terms of faking it, I don't know if you can see the picture very well, but uh, we have the trust us for soldiers. Um, this guy, I don't even think that his, his coat will button, you know. And uh, I think they're a little bit too old to be soldiers. What do, you, what do you think? There's no wrong answer, so anything that you want to say. Overconfidence? Anybody else? Just shout it out. Ignorance? Ignorance? Yeah, they, they probably think that they're still soldiers, but not so much, right? <laughs> I like that one. All right, how about this one? I'm Superman. Do you think that baby's cocky? <laughs> no, I don't think so. No, right? It's probably ignorance. The baby doesn't know any better, right? Okay, well, what about this one? Still Superman. <laughs> what do you think? Maybe a little overconfidence? Maybe ignorance. Maybe this guy thinks that I, like, he walked out of the house, he's like, I look good. <laughs> That's right. That's right. I thought about wearing my underwear outside of my pants today just because I thought this guy was cool. I thought that might detract, detract from the presentation, though. All right, what about this one? I, I kind of gave this example. What do you mean I am running this meeting? All together, one, two, three, thrown under the bus, right? <laughs> We've all been there. We've all been there. Step one is identify when you're faking it. Look at these five instances and say, when I'm walking into this meeting or when I'm walking into this situation, am I ignorant of what's going on? Was I thrown under the bus? Am I overconfident? Am I underconfident? If you can identify where you're faking it, that helps you identify the things that you need to know for the next time. So that way you don't have to fake it nearly as much the next time, right? Identification, it's the first step. All right, so if we're gonna go from faking it to earning it, let me start off. Again, raise your hands, how many of you are entrepreneurs? And how many of you are doing something that you love? Raise your hand if you're doing something that you love, okay? This is important, and you, know, you might say, well, what does this have to do with earning it? Uh, anybody can earn anything, but um, when you have to overcome hurdles, it helps when you love it, right? Like, I will, I will do anything in my power. I will drive 300 miles if it's a chance to see my kids. You know, there's, there's nothing that will stop me to see my kids, right? But if it comes to working out seven days a week, I can maybe make three, maybe four if I'm lucky, but seven days a week, uh, I just can't get out of bed. You know, you have to love it. And uh, how many of you guys know Gary Vaynerchuk? He's a great, he's a great guy. I, had, I do have one of his books up here. We're going to talk about these books here a little bit later. But he says that, he said this a couple years ago, and I did PG rate this. Notice it's not in quotations. I, I took out some, some words that he likes to use that I don't. But he says, he says that there's no reason why anyone should be doing something that they hate. There's like 50,000 jobs you know, in every city. You know, you can do anything. And obviously, we're all entrepreneurs. We're doing things that we love to do. So that's, that is a key because that's what's going to get you up out of bed in the morning, and that's what's going to help you get over some of the hurdles that you're bound to face. Now, there's a couple warnings that I'm going to throw in here. Warning number one, activity does not equal productivity. One of the things that I see happen a lot, and I am very guilty of this, is that when somebody says, okay, I need to do better, then they just start charging 100 miles an hour in a direction. And it might not be the right direction, but they're charging ahead. Um, at one point in time, we had a very large web business. We built a lot of websites. And I saw my guys working hours and hours and hours. And entrepreneurs, micro businesses, I love all of the micro businesses. Uh, I, I do everything that I can to give back. I'm a part of, uh, of a nonprofit to give back to smaller businesses. But one thing about small businesses is that they love their baby. And they spend a lot of time loving their baby. And they, they give you a lot of revisions. <laughs> and so we would spend hours and hours and hours building websites. And I said, you know what? If we buy digital media, we can, we can spend a third, an eighth of the time as, spending, as we're spending on these websites. And we can make 700,000 billion times more money. Why are we building websites, right? I saw my entire team was active. They were putting in 70 hours a week. They were active, but they were not productive in terms of growing the business. So I give you that warning as we move on, because the four things that we need to do is we need to start learning. We have identified where we're faking it. We need to start learning about the things that we're faking. We're going to make a list. As we go into any of the situations where we're faking it, we're going to start making a list. After we make the list, we might have 10 different items on our list that we're faking on a regular basis. You know, it might be finance meetings we're faking. You know, it might be anything. We walk in, we're faking it. But 
we have 10 things. Well, what is the thing that is going to be the most impactful in my business? What is the thing that is going to make me the most money in my business? Because if we don't have money, then why are we in business? We can't keep going, right? And then we're going to hustle. We're going to learn what we need to learn. We're going to prioritize it. We're going to hustle. And then we're going to repeat it. We're just going to repeat that cycle over and over again. It's because how do you fix ignorance? You got to learn, right? Whether that's through a college education program, you know, maybe you're going after a master's degree or a doctorate program. You know, maybe you're listening to podcasts or webinars or YouTube videos. Maybe you're live, watching live streams. You have to learn. We identified what we're faking. Now we need to learn. But there's a danger. There's a big danger. So another book that I brought, Six Months to Six Figures by Peter Vogt. He has a, a concept in here. It, it talks about information overload versus information mastery. And this is another one of those warnings that I'm going to stop and talk about because, again, I am very guilty of this. I love books. I love reading. I love audiobooks. I love them. I, I am a lifelong learner through and through. I will read all the time if I could. However, I get 100 books and I read all of them. And I read one and then the next and then the next and then the next. Have any of you guys ever done that? Just go from book to book to book? Okay, this is the only nerd in the room? <laughs> all right, I'm okay with that. I'm all right with that. But my problem was is that by the time I got to the third book, I forgot what the first book said. Now, have you ever done that? Or even if it's a blog article, you get to the second article, you forgot what the first one said? The problem is, is that there is so much information in the world today. There are so many resources that if we're not focusing on one topic specifically, and we are fully understanding that topic before we move on to the next one, then we have what's called information overload. We're retaining less and less information. And part of the, the struggle, how many of you have a uh, phone number directory in your cell phone? Everybody raise your hand. Come on, right? <laughs> this is the interactive portion. How many of you have stored email addresses in your phone? How many of you can name the phone number of the 10 closest people to you right now? Two. And maybe three. And you, I see the look on your face. You're saying, why do I need to? It's in my phone. Right? right? And that's a, that, that is a real thing. We, technology is helping us. It is helping us so we don't have to remember the 10 phone numbers. They are right there. However, that is also training our brain to rely on the technology to prompt us. And what I've found is that as I get into situations, I have a lot of information that's stored up here. However, there's a lot of information that's referenced in other places. And so you might ask me a question. Well, what is the answer to X? And I'll say, I know the answer to that. Hold on, I need to pull up a Google Doc that's in my drive. And I will tell you, because I, I made notes, and I'm diligent, um, I can't remember. But I have the notes. I, I, can, I could reference it later. Yeah? Have you, have you ever done that before? Yeah. So we have to be very careful. You have to digest a chapter of a book, and then read it again. And then read it again until the, you walk away from that, and you can remember it five minutes later. And you can remember it a half hour later. Because if you don't remember that, then it's not going to do you any good to go to the next book because you're just going to spend all your time reading and you're not going to retain anything. Okay, So that's my public service announcement about information overload. We have to focus, though. We talked about prioritization. We identify the things that we're faking it. We've made a list. Now we need to focus on what is the one thing that is going to be the most impactful to my business. Now, if the one thing is focusing on maybe making your invoices better so that you can get paid faster, or maybe it's a process to get paid faster from your vendors and, or from your clients, then that might be something that's really important. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's just selling. Maybe you need to spend more of your time selling and less of your time worrying about fixing your website. We are entrepreneurs. We own businesses. We wear multiple hats. We get pulled in every single direction, right? However, we have to ask ourselves, what are the only the things that I can do? And those are the things that I need to focus on to grow my business to be the most profitable and to be the most successful. Because can we agree that you can fake it and be mediocre? Can we agree with that? Can we agree that you can fake it and be great? Can you? You can fake it and be great? I, I don't think so. I, I mean, what's <laughs> okay, no political conversations. <laughs> If you want to be great, if you want to be the best person in your industry, you can't fake it all the time. You're going to have to fake it sometimes, but you can't fake it all the time. You need to focus. Would you rather make $10 an hour or $100 an hour? Who wants to make $10 an hour? 
No baristas in the room. Okay, who wants to make $100 an hour? There's the entrepreneurs. How many of you want to make $1,000 an hour? Now, if I told you that you could make $1,000 an hour instead of making $10 an hour, what would you spend your time doing? $1,000? Obviously, right? So let me tell you an example. My accountant, she has two different billing codes that she uses. She has the billing code for when she's entering things into QuickBooks and fixing my mistakes. And she has the strategic direction billing code. Now, her strategic billing code is way higher than the fixing the QuickBooks. Now, if she were smart, right, then she would spend all of her time doing strategic if she can. Now, we don't necessarily all have teams of 100 people to take care of all the QuickBooks entries. I get that. But if you have the choice between focusing on strategy and focusing on QuickBooks entry, you're going to do the one that makes you the most money, right? So as we are prioritizing the things that we're faking, that we need to learn and to earn it, we need to focus on the things that are going to make us the most money. So in this case, for the accountant, it's the strategic time. She needs to look and say, how can I get somebody else who costs me $15, $20 an hour to do the QuickBooks entry while I can spend more and more time doing strategy because that's where I make the most money. So to learn or to delegate, that's the question. Lee Iacocca, big guy, and I'm not sure if you're familiar with him, but steel industry, automotive, right? I hire people brighter than me and then I get out of their way. He did not spend time assembling engines. He did not spend time stamping out uh, rolled metal. He, he spent time leading his leadership team because that's where he was the most effective and he could make the most impact in his business. He's probably spent time on the floor. He probably spent time talking to people, but that's not what he did with his time. He didn't say, well, I'm a better engineer than you. I'm just going to do this. You go ahead and lead the company. That wouldn't make any sense. No, he hired the people that were the most qualified. So we have to decide, are we going to learn this ourselves because this will maximize our business, or are we going to delegate this to somebody that can do it for us? Let's take getting a cup of fabulous Dunkin' Donuts coffee. I can stand up, I can walk over, I can pour myself a cup of coffee, I can walk back, and I can drink it. You know, maybe if I talk to a couple of people on the way, it'll take me a couple minutes to do that. How many people in this room are capable of standing up, walking over to get a cup of coffee? Everybody. Now, please do not hear me wrong. I don't want anybody tweeting saying that Roy hates interns. But is an intern capable of getting a cup of coffee? Is the intern who you either don't pay or pay like minimum wage, is that time and money more valuably spent having that person go get your coffee than the $100 an hour that you're doing? Maybe. Maybe, and again, I'm not saying that this is the only reason we have interns, right? I mean, interns are very valuable. You know, we, we want to take care of our interns, right? They're the future of our companies. But it is possible for the intern to go get you a cup of coffee. Guess what? You just got five minutes of your day back. You know, if you're not great at entering things into QuickBooks, and you can hire somebody for 20 bucks an hour, 15 bucks an hour to enter things into QuickBooks for you, and you can spend your time doing consultation work for $250 an hour, it seems like a net gain to me. Right? So we just need to learn. That's what's going to cause us to prioritize. Right? Once we have prioritized, right, we have identified where we're faking it, we've made the list, we've prioritized the list, now and only now it's time to hustle. Because it, now we know where we're going. Now we know what we're studying. Now we know how it's going to impact our business. And so now it's time to hustle. Right? And I'm going to give a free shout out here to uh, startartdrugs.com. And no, it's not a paid promotion or anything like that. They just have really cool stuff that I like. But I really love this shirt. Nine to five is for the week. And you know, if you are working in a cubicle and you're filing paperwork, you know, nine to five probably works. It probably works just fine. But if you're an entrepreneur who is running a business and you're wearing 75 hats, nine to five isn't going to cut it. All right, so we're all entrepreneurs. How many of you have ever worked nine to five and have been greatly successful by sticking to those hours? <laughs> Nobody, really? Yeah, no, right? Nine to five doesn't work. Nine to five is, is great for the time that you're interacting with your clients. It's great for the time that you're interacting with your team. It gives you time to lead and to direct and to coach and to train. But it's, it's not enough time. There's not enough hours in the day from nine to five in order to be effective in earning your spot as the best in your industry. So we need to hustle. So how are we going to hustle? 
How are we going to hustle? We're going to hustle by finding time when you least expect it. Now, hear me clearly. I am not saying that if you're married or in a relationship, you should spend less time with your significant other. Okay? I am not saying that. As a matter of fact, you should spend more time with them because they're going to be there to support you when you get burnt out and you have to go to the psych ward because you're crazy. Right? <clears throat> I'm not talking about spending less time with your kids. I'm talking about taking the time that you're with them and making sure that it's very focused on them. How many of us have ever been checking email while having a conversation with somebody that we love? Did that person ever look, at it or look over at you and say, did you just put me on hold? Because that's what we did. We said, this, whatever is on this device, is more important than what you're saying to me right now. So we got to be focused on our families. We have to be focused. So when we show up, if we have 30 minutes that we can spend quality one-on-one -on -one time with our kids, we can't be worrying about what our latest tweet is going to be or what is going on at the office. Say, you know what, 30 minutes, the world will survive without me. I need to dedicate this time to my kids. I need to dedicate this time to my spouse because they need it just as much as your business needs it. And they're going to be with you long after your business comes and goes or you sell your business. They're the ones that are left there to pick up the pieces when you fall apart because we all do at some point in one way, shape, or form or another. So I'm not saying to take time away from them to hustle for your business. I'm saying let's identify areas that we can spend our time more specifically, more focused on our business and learning to earn our place as the best. Things like Facebook stalking people that we haven't seen in two years. <laughs> Nobody's ever done that, right? Oh, look, this person, Susie. Yeah, I went to college with her 15 years ago. Oh, she has kids. Oh, look, this cute dog. Oh, yeah. And you, how much time do you spend? You get sucked into the news feed, right? What about just watching an hour episode of television? Does anybody watch TV anymore? Hulu, YouTube, nothing? OK, so maybe some, right? How many of you take a shower? I hope everybody raises their hand. OK, the camera won't pan around. I won't talk to anybody. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. They make waterproof speakers. You could be learning in the shower. Car University. How many of you have heard of Car University? I am, a, I am a regular attender of Carr University. As a matter of fact, it was an hour drive from my office in Fairlawn to here. I spent the entire time listening to an hour-long podcast on the way up here. And I learned a whole lot of stuff in that hour that these people imparted upon me. That is an hour that I'm not worried about. My, my wife is worrying about vying for my time. My kids aren't vying for my time. My team knows that I'm driving. They're not calling me, asking me 100 questions. I am learning about my trade, and I am maximizing the time that I have so that I can be as effective as possible, right? So there's any time that you can find even 10 minutes in a day where you're doing something that you probably don't need to be doing, you could be hustling to learn, to earn your spot as the best of the best. Anybody, we already said it, anybody can be mediocre and they can fake it. You're not going to be a millionaire if you're faking it, right? Uh, you know, that may not be your goal, to be a millionaire, but you're not going to become a millionaire if you're faking it. Not unless you stumble on a gold mine. You know, you have to work. You have to earn it. There are a million other people right now in your industry doing what you're doing that are hustling. They're listening to podcasts in the car. And they're listening to YouTube explanation videos. They're going to class. They're learning how to do what you don't know how to do. And what you're going to find is that if you're not hustling too, then in six months, you're going to find out about this product that this other person already knew about, already created a plan for, already implemented it, tested it, developed it, and pitched it to their clients, and you just learned about it. You're going to be behind the eight ball. Now you're playing catch up, right? You got to hustle today to be ready tomorrow. Does that make sense? Are, are we on board with that? All right, so what happens when you get thrown under the bus because you're going to? We've all been there. We'll all be there again. And I want to end on this because of the fact that at the end of the day, you're still going to fake it. No matter what, at some point, you're still going to fake it. We all will fake it because of the five reasons we listed before. But you're going to fake it. You're going to own it. You're going to be confident. You're going to pretend like you know everything that's going on. You're going to wow your client because you know 10% more than they do, which is all that you really need to wow somebody. But you know that there's a whole lot more that you could learn. And then you're going to add that to your list your list of things that you need to learn in order to propel your business forward, and then you're going to just try to keep from being put in that situation again. So if you get put into a meeting and you have to talk about something, then you're going to be prepared for that. You know, here's a classic example. 
What happens when you go to the doctor and you get diagnosed with a disease? Do you go home and just be like, eh, all right, I got a disease? Or do you dive into every single resource that you can find on that disease? So you go to the doctor, and the doctor's like, oh, I'm sad to say you have diabetes. Darn. And then you go home, and you're like on WebMD, and you're looking up Google articles, and you're learning about what an A1C number is, and you're learning about your uh, carbohydrates and glycemic index, and you're learning about exercise and, and managing your routine and eating every couple of hours instead of eating big meals, and you're becoming an expert in di everything diabetes. You now, you now know everything about diabetes because this is affecting you, right? Well, if you were in that, in that position with your business and it was costing you $1,000 every minute because you didn't know something, that, that's, that's painful, right? You're going to dedicate time to learning this stuff, right? You don't, when, you, when you realize this, you don't want to fake it anymore. You don't want to be put in a situation that you don't know what's going on. I reached a point in my career about a year and a half ago where I said that I am so tired of walking into meetings and having no idea what is going on. I'm like, yeah, I'm the president of the company. Yeah, I, I built from scratch a lot of the tools that we use. I have built a lot of our networks that we use. I know everything from top to bottom. But that still doesn't change the fact that when I walk into a meeting, maybe it's with a new client or maybe it's even an internal meeting talking about a project that we're going to kick off and having no idea what's going on. Not only am I wasting my time, I'm wasting my team's time. If it only takes me 15 minutes to figure out what's going on, that's 15 minutes of my time and 15 minutes of every single other person's time that's in the room. If you have 10 people in a room, you're talking about over two hours of time that is wasted. And if you're looking at that from a billable perspective, if you're a consultant and you're, you're missing out on two hours of billable work, that's a lot of money that you're missing out on just because you have 15 minutes where you don't know what's going on. That is a lot bigger lesson than just, well, I just don't like being uncomfortable, right? So there's uh, one last thing that I want to want to talk about here. And um, at the end of the day, we have to identify where we're faking it. We have to prioritize what we're going to do. And then we have to hustle, and we have to work towards earning it. Now, I have a couple books here. I actually have uh, five books. These are some of my favorite books. We have um, Gary V, hashtag Ask Gary V, uh, Who Moved My Cheese, Dave Ramsey, Entree Leadership. Have any of you guys ever read any of these books? Start, John Acuff, this guy is hilarious. I'm not sure if you have heard of him or not. He used to work with Dave Ramsey. Hilarious. Six Months to Six Figures, Peter Vood, and just because we can all be better leaders, leadership and self-deception. And so what I'm going to do is uh, everybody take out your cell phones and go to jamescbrands.com slash Phoebe. And if you would do me the favor of signing up for our newsletter, then I will give you a card and we'll draw a winner to win these books. So, and I promise uh, I'm not going to sell your information. I'm not going to spam you. We send out one email a week. It has, we're launching a podcast next month. So it's going to talk about what our podcast is about. And it's going to have two or three blog articles that we have uh, on our website in case you find it interesting. So just fill it out. It's just your name and your email address. And uh, you'll get a bounce back email that just says, you know, please confirm that you're signing up for this. And if you do that, come up here. I have, uh, I have my cards, and they have numbers on them. This is really, really high tech. As a side note, I really believe that, that print is not dead. And my company is really built on bringing together digital and print. But, um, and you'll notice by the QR code. How many of you guys ever use QR codes anymore? They were really popular a few years ago. They're kind of coming back a little bit. NFC is pretty popular, but Apple is uh, mean and won't let you use NFC for anything but Apple Pay. So, but come up here. I'll give you a card. It has a number on it. And then when we do that, I'll throw the number in a bag. I have another little piece of paper. Again, really high tech, I know. I'm just blowing your mind with how high tech I am, right? jmcbrands.com slash Phoebe. It's right up here on the screen here. I didn't, I didn't tell you it was on the screen. I was cheating. OK. Yep. So if you got that, come on up and get a card. And uh, again, I appreciate, appreciate you signing up. And like I say, it's a chance to win. This is uh, about $75 worth of books. So hopefully that's valuable to you. And if it's not valuable to you, you can tell me too because uh, well, how do we learn things? And uh, while everyone's filling this out, this is a great time for a Q&A. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to, uh, I think they have a microphone that you can pass around or you can shout it out. Yeah, that's a, he asked how, you, how I personally go about prioritizing for my business. And really, for me, it's, it's all about the dollars and cents. 
it, it's either what is going to make me the most money or what is going to get me paid the fastest. You know, cash is king in a small business. There's no doubt about that. Uh, we were in a situation not very long ago where we were taking, we had some clients that were taking six months to pay us. And at the time, we had nothing in our clauses that said anything about late penalties, <laughs> interest fees. You know, I, I'm, a, I, I'm a generally good, nice guy. I don't like to have to charge people extra because I know that, you know, we work a lot with other agencies. And so I know that I bill an agency and then that, that agency has to bill their client. They have to wait to get paid and then they can turn around and pay me. And so one of the biggest things for me was, well, how can I get at least the cost of the media that I'm paying out of pocket back before I'm spreading out the money to all these vendors that are providing this, the solutions for us? And so for me, it really comes down to, you know, what is going to make the biggest impact in terms of dollars and cents? And that, that's the number one priority. If everything is kind of flowing smoothly, you know, we're, we're prioritizing our time in a way that everybody is maximizing their billable revenue and everybody is, we're getting paid quickly from all of our vendors. And then I look at how can I raise up my team? Because the less work that I have to do, then the more time I have to lead. So if I can, if I can spend the time, we have, we have four team leaders. If I can spend the time raising them up so that they are prepared and they don't have to ask me 100 questions, I'm removing bottlenecks, which means that the processes get done faster. I'm teaching them for the future so that they know how to be better leaders and that they can then learn how to elevate their team. So pretty much it goes in that order, cash flow to prioritizing my leadership team. Um, how, do you go, how do you go about when a customer asks you, can you do something, and you don't know how to do it? Do you say you can and then learn how to do it? Well, that's, that's a great question, and I will say this. If I don't know how to do it, then chances are it's not in my wheelhouse. If you've ever read the book uh, Good to Great by Jim Collins, he talks about his hedgehog concept. The hedgehog concept talks about taking the thing that you can be the best in the world at and the skills that you have and kind of combining them all together into what you can do the best. It, you know, if somebody comes up to me and asks me if I can do something off the wall, I'm probably going to say, no, I don't do that. Well, I mean, something that's related to, like, you know, your video. Well, we don't do video, but I understand what you're saying. So if somebody says something in, in my wheelhouse that I'm doing, I, personally, I'm a very honest person. I'm going to tell you that I have not done that before, but we do have a network of, like, 200 different vendors that we work with. So chances are one of them have done it. You know, I very rarely walk into a meeting that they ask me a specific question that I don't know about and wing it to the point of saying, oh yeah, I completely know how to do video, like for example. You know, I will say flat out, I do not do video. We have no desire to do video, but we have uh, five great partners that do videos and they are all over the state. So pick the one closest to you or the one that you like to work the best. We will facilitate the process. But typically, unless it is something that is, uh, I mean, typically I, I, won't, I won't ever say something that I know if I don't know it, I might not know as I might know something and not know as much as I feel like I ought to know. So, like I mentioned, the ten percent. If you know ten percent more than your client, then you're going to sound really, really smart. So, if somebody walks in and says, for example, let's talk about Google Tag Manager, and I'm going to say, oh yeah, yeah, we do that all day long. Throw all of your tags into the Tag Manager. We'll throw it on your website. It's great. It's awesome. You get these great reports. Could I walk out of that meeting and then put the tag manager together? No, I couldn't. But Rose could. And Nicole can. You know, they can. You know, so I can I could improvise to a certain extent, right? Because I know the basics. But yeah, if, if it's something I have no knowledge about, I won't fake it personally. To me, that's the overconfidence one. I, I try not to be overconfident. What about this side? Come on, we have to have questions, right? Nothing. <laughs> <coughs> Um, do you have, you know, in all your years of the marketing experience that you have, got kind of like the top one or two or three mistakes that you see your clients make um, that you just see over and over and over again that maybe they think they're doing things right and they're completely wrong or they're yeah. just not even close to what the industry should be, they should be doing or? Yeah, you know, there was a commercial um, not too long ago and I don't know if any of you saw it, but it's these two guys standing in an elevator and this younger person runs in the elevator and says, oh, have you heard about this new app, this new social network? It's, it's so cool. It's awesome. And they go up to the top floor of the building. They walk out, and they're like, you, find out what this is. You start implementing a program. You do uh, hashtags. You build out all this creative, and uh, blah, blah, blah. They go through this whole thing. And then at the end of the day, they get back on the elevator. The same younger person gets on and says, 
oh, are you still on this? He's like, ah, oh, no, my grandma's on that. I don't even care anymore. <laughs> and honestly, we've seen that happen a lot. People are very quick to jump into things that they don't understand because it's popular. They're, they're, any time that a client is focused on what is cool means that we're, we're probably starting off on the wrong foot. Because if we're not starting off with what the end objective is in the first place, then we're probably not going in the right direction. Just like I mentioned before about prioritizing what you're learning, it's the same thing. The clients do it all the time. They're like, oh, everyone's on Snapchat. I need to be on Snapchat. I'm like, your target demographic is 60 years old. Why are you on Snapchat? Go, go on Facebook. It's the most popular growing part of Facebook right now. Go Facebook, really, right now, you know? And they're like, no, 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 no. We, 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 we created these filters, and they're so cool. I'm like, are you pre-prospecting for 18-year-olds because they're going to retire someday? <laughs> I'm like, I don't think they're going to remember this 50 years from now. So, I mean, truthfully, that is probably the biggest thing that we see on a regular basis is people are trying to follow the trends instead of trying to follow what they're trying to achieve. All right, well, what do you say? Should we, should we pick a winner? Did everybody? She needs a card. You need a card? Yes. All right, there we go. Thank you, by the way, for signing up. And if you unsubscribe next week, I won't really take it personally. <laughs> I mean, I might, but now, uh, hopefully, if you find this valuable, hopefully you'll find some of the content that we have available as valuable as well. So everybody, last chance, last call. All right, did we get it? All right. Oh, here, uh, let, me, let me do it this way so that it's all even. I, uh, I, I've gone to a lot of trade shows. Have you ever seen these cool people that go to trade shows that have their address and phone number on the back of their business card, um, like a, um, a return label? They just have like these plain business cards and they just have the return label on the back and they just go around to booth to booth to booth and they just start dropping their business card into it. It's not even a real business card, it's just a return label on the back of a piece of cardboard. But they're just like everywhere. Like, I'm like, like do you really need a Hoover vacuum cleaner? Like, yes I do, I have seven. You know, but they don't care. They're like, I'm, I'm gonna win something. So that's that's all that matters. Do we have anything else? Let me put it in this box. They are not moving around very well. There we go. Did you see what just happened? <laughs> have you guys been there before? All right. I thought I was prepared. No longer. That, is that the one? All right. I'm gonna. I want somebody to come up here and. Uh, and uh, pick for me here. I don't want to say it was rigged. All right, right. You mind? Close my eyes. All right. Here it is. This one? There it is. 18. 18. Who's got 18? Bingo! <laughs> All righty. For you, my friend. Wow. Awesome. I hope Thanks you enjoy. <laughs> All right. Well, if uh, nobody has any other questions, um, Oh, each book? Oh, that would have been nice. I have books for sale. <laughs> <laughs> he's sitting back there. He's like, I read all of these, you know? That's an option. All right. Well, thanks for having me out, guys. I hope uh, it was valuable for your time. Yep. And you. I'll be here if you have any other questions. Thank all right. you.